So in this video, I'm going to talk about the various laws that govern how circuitry behaves, specifically looking at how we can calculate the current and potential difference in more complicated networks. And there's some very simple rules called Kirchhoff's laws, which all circuits follow and allow you to predict how they will behave. The first part we need to know about is how to combine resistors to form one equivalent resistor. So what I mean by that is this circuit up here, what I want to do is create a more simple circuit and this one here has resistance R RT. That looks really ugly. Um, anyway, so what we're trying to do is come take these two resistors and combine them into one. And with series resistors, it's really easy. You just add them together. So the way to really recognize series resistors is if you can draw a line from a power source through both resistors and back to the power source without sort of branching out or splitting or going into a different. So you need one complete loop containing a power source like this. And if they're in series, you just add them together. Nice and simple. So let's look at something a little bit more complicated. If we're trying to take these parallel resistors, and again, what we're trying to do is get them so they're in a form where they're in a simple circuit like this with resistance RT, and we're trying to calculate what RT is. So parallel resistors obey a different rule. It's called a reciprocal rule. So to get the resistance, the total resistance, you get 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over one of these parallel ones plus 1 over these other ones, and however many resistors are in parallel, no bother. You just keep adding them on. So in this example here, we've only got two resistors, so we need R1 and R2. We don't need all these other terms here. So it's just a case of adding the reciprocals. So you can either do this on your calculator or, like me, get a common denominator to add them together. Then flip it over to get the total. So in this case, RT would be 6.7 ohms. Again, those are two fairly simple examples. Let's complicate it a little bit more with an example. OK, so we have this circuit over here on the left. Now, what you notice is it's currently a bit ugly. So we've got these two series resistors here in like a parallel loop. So as we can see, they're series because we can draw a loop containing both of them and a power source. So what we're going to do is we're going to add them together to give you this 20 ohm one. So we're applying the series resistor rule. Now what we can see here is we've got three parallel resistors. So remembering our combining rule, we've got three resistors here, so we're going to need three terms like this. And what we've got, so we've got 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus, let's convert 1 over 10 into already into 2 over 20, so it's nice and simple. So that gives you 4 over 20. So that means the total resistance is 20 over 4, so we flipped it, which gives you 5 ohms. Now what the question is actually asking you is the current leaving the battery, and this is where it's really helpful, because what we've done is we formed a equivalent circuit, so this is still 6 volts, but now we've only got one resistor in it, and it's 5 ohms. And we know a very easy way to calculate the current is to start off with Ohm's law. So we want to calculate the current. Simple case of V divided by R, so we've got 6, divided by 5, which gives you 1.2 amps. Now notice here, both of these values would give, well, this 5 here, for instance, is one significant figure here, but we never give answers to one sig fig, so we move it up to two. So that's the one of the exceptions to the sig fig rules there. And actually, now I think about it, um, that's fine. Yep, cool. Okay, so that's your example. And then, as usual, we've got the nice typed out solution there in case you couldn't read the writing of this at any point. And then let's move on to the next section. So that's how we combine resistors. And now we want to look at how potential differences and currents operate in a circuit. Okay, 
So there's a guy called Kirchhoff, a very famous physicist, way back, I'm not sure exactly the dates when he was around, but he was one of the early physicists, um, and these have been named after him, so they've been given his name, which is always nice. Um, in most of the AQA textbooks, actually, they don't give them this name, they just call them laws, but this is calling them properly, they're the Kirchhoff's laws. So he has a current law, which says, the total current going into a junction is equal to the total current leaving a junction. So if we see here on the right hand side we've got a 2 amps going in here and another 2 amps going in here. So if this is a junction where they meet, total going in is 4 amps, so then total coming out must also be 4 amps. So in terms of seeing what that looks like in a circuit, what you'll sort of see is like a parallel loop where you get this split like this, and you'll find the four amps in here. So this is the junction where they've connected, and this two amps and this two amps feed into the four amps. So that's the sort of situation we see the Kirchhoff's current law applied, where you've got a parallel circuit with splits in it. Very useful thing to be able to apply. Okay, so that's his current law. Then he also has a thing called voltage laws, or potential difference laws. And the first one is looking at parallel components. And what it says is that the potential difference across parallel components is the same. So if we look here, we've got a series loop here with just the 20 ohms, and we've got a series loop here with the other 20 ohms. And what the current law is, voltage law even, is saying is that the potential difference across here is equal to the potential difference across here, which is equal to the potential difference across here, because these are all in parallel and we, of course, know the potential difference here because it's the voltage of your battery or cell or power back or whatever it is. So that must be equal to the potential difference here and here. And we'll have a look at that in an example a bit later on. I don't know why it says 10 ohms. That is nonsense. It should say 6.0 volts. No idea what's going on there. Bit odd. But anyway. Okay, and then the other voltage law is looking at series loops. So what it says is that the voltage from your cell or the EMF, if there's no internal resistance, is equal to the sum of the potential differences around your loop. So if we see here, the potential difference from the cell, or the voltage from the cell, the 6, is going to be shared between these two. And because they're the same, it's going to be split equally. So if you've got 3 volts across here, and a 6 total, that would leave 3 there. Um, so that's the voltage law and how it's shared in a series loop. So let's look at an example with this so we can see. Okay, so we want to know three things about the circuit. We want to know what the voltmeter reading is, we want to know the current in each of those loops, and we want to calculate the current flowing from the cell. Okay, so let's start off with the voltmeter reading. So if we look here, we've got a series loop here, and we know the potential difference across this loop must be 6.0 volts due to Kirchhoff's parallel voltage law. Okay, so we've got potential difference across these two is 6. And because they're equal to each other, we would find that you have 3 and 3. Now I don't want you just to take that for so let's actually show this another way. So let's look at the current going through here. And let's call that I1, let's call this I2, and let's call this I total. So I1 is going to be potential difference divided by the resistance, 6.0 divided by 40, which gives you 0.15 amps. So you've actually answered part of the part two. But anyway, so if we want to calculate V here, we know we're going to use Ohm's law, so V equals IR, 0.15 times by 
the resistance, which is 20, which gives you 3.0 volts. So you can see by doing the calculations the long way, we can show that you've got 3.0 volts across here, which must mean you have 3.0 volts here using Kirchhoff's voltage series law. And what we've got is we've already managed to calculate the current and we've got, so we've got the voltmeter reading. So we've answered part one and part of part two. So in terms of answer, finishing off part two, we want to know I2. Again, very simply using Ohm's law as we often do. Divided by 20, which is gonna give you 0 0.30 amps. So now we've got the answer to part two. So we've got 0.15 in the top loop and 0 0.30 in the bottom loop. And we've got twice as much in the bottom loop because it's half the resistance, kind of makes sense. So in terms of part three, we're gonna apply this part one, it's kind of... So you see what I'm answering. And then part three, we're just gonna use Kirchhoff's current law, so it must be because they both come together to form that one. So 0 0.15 plus 0 0.30, which gives you 0 0.45 amps, it is the current flowing from the cell. Because if we see here, the current going into the cell, if you like, is going to, is this 0 0.45, and there's no other thing spitting out, so the current coming out must be the same. Which is Kirchhoff's current law. So we've got 0.45 going around your circuit. As usual, we've got the worked solutions here. Um, I've gone about it a slightly different way in this calculator way to one because I wanted to show you several different ways of going about it, but essentially it's the same principles in action here.